Welcome to another day with Jesus. The power is where it's always been. The Word of God is alive. You are listening to challenging devotions and heart-inspiring conversations with Pastor Prigi and Rajmi Varghese. Visit www.pastorprigi.com for more resources. Good morning, friends. Uh, we've been studying together over this one week, and we've been studying on the importance of uh, being a child of God who will continually respond to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God has a high significance in our life, a, a huge significance that we cannot really understand in our entire lifetime. I think when we go to heaven, we will still be continuing to respond to the Holy Spirit. And the more we respond to the Holy Spirit, the better we will understand the heart of God. So, the first thing that we realized this week was that we need to be filled in the Holy Spirit. Then we need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Then we need to move in the power. We need to experience the power of the Holy Spirit. What I'm going to talk to you about today is, is how to host this Holy Spirit. How to have a, 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 a lifestyle of relationship with this Holy Spirit. Now, uh, we all know the fact that the Holy Spirit is a person. He's not a, just a ghost or a spirit or something in, uh, inanimate. He is a person, right? Uh, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, He has identified you as His own and guaranteeing that you will be saved in the day of redemption. What the author Paul is saying is that there is a chance that sometimes we can bring sorrow to the Spirit of God. In other words, the Spirit of God is a person who can experience emotions. He can be sorrowful. He can be uh, joyful. He can be passionate. He, he can experience the emotions that Jesus and the Father can experience. So, He is completely a person. He is not devoid of emotions. So, it becomes very, very important to know how we get to host this Spirit of God. Because uh, Jesus said this very, very important thing. He said, the Father, He will forgive any sins that you do. If you commit a sin against Him, He will forgive you. If you commit a sin against me, He'll still forgive you. But if you commit a sin against the Holy Spirit, neither will the Father forgive me, forgive you, but nor will I forgive you because a sin against the Holy Spirit is serious, you know. So, uh, what, what, what do you mean by sinning against the Holy Spirit? It is, what do you mean by blaspheming the Holy Spirit? It's not always the small little things that, uh, that, that we think it is. It is, it is the, it is causing sorrow to him by the way we live, by defiling his name, by uh, taking advantage of God's Holy Spirit. Like sometimes we've heard of testimonies and, you know, not actually testimonies, but like really bad stories of how prophets and healing evangelists has taken advantage of people, their money, their body, by prophesying things, by it's by promising them healing, uh, which are actually gifts of the Holy Spirit in, in their life. What are they doing? They're misusing, they're abusing the gift of the Holy Spirit in their life. And when they do that, when you and I might not uh, end up doing something like that, but even, even in small little things, when we end up bringing uh, bringing hurt to this holy spirit when we quench the spirit of god i'm not i'm not going to tell you that you know he will leave you that's not what the bible says first the bible says he might be grieved because of the way you live he might be grieved because of the way you conduct your church service sometimes see when i'm talking about hosting him i'm not just talking about hosting him in your heart you know, there are various levels of influence God has given us. You know, you got to host the Holy Spirit in your home. You got to treat him right. You got to give him the deserved place in your home. Uh, you got to welcome the Holy Spirit and, 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 and celebrate him on every Sunday service, in every prayer meeting, every gathering, in a, in a corporate fellowship, when you gather to worship and pray. You know, let him know that he is welcome and he is the Lord of that service. Uh, when 
you do ministry, Jesus said, pray to the Lord of the harvest. Who is the Lord of the harvest? It is the Holy Spirit. Who is the Lord of the harvest on the earth today? You pray to him, you acknowledge him, you host him in your ministry, you host him in your church, you host him in your family, you host him in your personal life. You know, it's easier to host him everywhere else than to host him in our personal life. Because when we begin to host him in our personal life, oh, trust me, you you will begin to uh, rejoice on the things that God's heart rejoices. You, you will begin to weep over the sins of people around you, over the sins that you see in yourself. You, you, you will begin to be passionate to... To, to reach out to people that God is passionate about because currently you're hosting him, right? It's like this. When you have a guest in your house, though you might not be used to taking bath in cold water, but because your guest always is taking bath in cold water or, or hot water, whatever, you will become acquainted. You will start uh, doing that intentionally just for the sake of your guest and and that is that is what God wants us to because we are hosting him in us he is not just a visitor like some would uh, host guests but he is a permanent resident in us right he he is here to stay for good so when we know that fact uh, the way that we host them has to go into the next level better than how we would treat guests i pray that you will host him with all of your heart soul mind and strength today god bless you guys thank you for joining today If you are blessed, take a moment to share this podcast with somebody else. God bless you.